Greetings and salutations and welcome to Colin's Last Stand, the independent, fan-supported show dedicated to our shared love of politics, history, knowledge, and free thought. Thank you for being here with me today. I hope you're doing well. Today I want to make an impassioned plea for science and technology. A plea not at all rooted in politics, but instead rooted in wonder and curiosity. I want to make a plea for progress, for doing hard things, for asking big questions, and for stumbling upon mind-melting answers. I want to make a plea for spending just a little bit of money and paying just a little bit of attention, and how spending that money and paying that attention can go a very long way. I want to make a plea for the continued and increased funding of one of the only governmental agencies truly worth a damn, one of the only ones that makes us think, adds positively to our discourse, and charts new paths for all mankind, NASA. NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, was founded in October of 1958 and has since specialized in filling the nation, along with the rest of the world, with undeniable feelings of awe. For nearly six decades, the famous American Space Agency has conducted missions and experiments, the likes of which a pre-World War II population couldn't even fathom. The stuff of cheesy sci-fi comic books and cheap pulp novels. NASA, in many ways, has represented an American hand held out to the rest of the world, pointing upwards towards a star-studded void. A vast nothingness that, as it turns out, isn't so empty after all. Even during times of war and social upheaval, the Cold War, Vietnam, the fall of the Soviet Union, and the rise of terror, NASA has been quietly and occasionally loudly working on behalf of a society that's eager to know more about what's beyond the safety of our atmosphere. I consider myself a small government guy, one that agrees with the principle of the famous Grover Norquist quote, the idea that the federal apparatus should be so small you could drown it in a bathtub. Washington, D.C. is one giant, endless bureaucracy, a wasteful behemoth that shamelessly feeds itself on trillions of dollars a year given to it by a population that asks too few questions about what's going on and requires too little in return for their forced investment. Washington is a capital city like any other, led by a fat ruling class, a comfortable establishment so embedded in its natural habitat that we, as a people, can barely expect any change. But for all the government needlessly wastes and squanders, it has the opportunity to do big things, huge things even if only it prioritized what was actually important and relevant to us here in 2017. Just because the government does so much wrong doesn't mean it can't do anything right, even though I will always love and adore the Ronald Reagan quote that suggested otherwise. There are some heavy lifts that, for a small price, the American population can and should endeavor undertaking together. Instead of funneling money towards predictable quagmires and false starts, perhaps we can instead push some funds towards what makes us think not only as individuals, but as a society, as a nation, as a people. Something that inspires future generations of thinkers to, in turn, do great things. And sometimes, that costs money. When Thomas Jefferson asked Congress for $2,500 in 1803 to fund the westward exploration of Lewis and Clark, it was to further our understanding of something unknown. The expedition took time. It was dangerous. There was no guarantee of success. Hell, success wasn't even defined. And there also wasn't any guarantee that anyone would survive. It was glamorous, scary, and maybe even a little obtuse. But Jefferson got his money, and much more too. The trip overran Jefferson's ask more than 15 times over. What Lewis and Clark came back with wasn't something tangible. It was knowledge. Maps of locations unseen, information about Indian tribes never before encountered, detailed notes of new flora and fauna material that would fascinate a curious generation and make Lewis and Clark timeless American heroes. Just consider this. In 2015, the American government spent $598.5 billion on its war machine alone. Think about that. Just shy of $600 billion was spent in a single year, one calendar year, on endless amounts of weapons, missiles, planes, ground vehicles, ships, personnel, base upkeep across the world, operations, occupations, military aid, and more. The American government in 2015 spent more money on its military than the next seven countries combined, including China and Russia, and accounted for 37% of total military spending on the entire planet. The American government outspends its greatest geopolitical adversary, China, by an additional 177% on top of Chinese military spending. The US has a population less than a fourth as big as China's. Why is this important? Because in 2015, NASA, the quaint by comparison agency full of amazing scientific minds, cost the American taxpayer $17.5 billion. That amounts to 34 times less than the wads of cash shoved hand over fist to the Department of Defense annually, no questions asked. 
Even when funded at its highest level relative to inflation, which was during the space race with the Soviet Union, NASA was spending just north of three times that much relative to today's dollar value, executing on far more ambitious plans than the agency is currently able to. I'm not here today to pick through the American budget with a scalpel, exposing all of the ways our money is mistreated, misappropriated, and misspent. This video would be five hours long if I did that. I don't mean to only focus on the American military either, the greatest and bravest fighting force the world has ever known, an armed force so superior to any other in the world that Americans needn't lose a wink of sleep in thinking about the existential what-ifs before us. The fact is, while the military is the single biggest example of flagrantly wasting money, it's certainly not the only example. And either way, it's not on the people who serve, but the executive and legislative branches that can't help themselves. It's these same executive and legislative branches that need to rethink how and why money is spent, and if a greater emphasis should be placed on answering questions instead of blowing things to smithereens, on pushing the boundaries of exploration instead of building an impressive and convincing facade of national security. I'm all for retaining a military so mighty that no one dare challenge it. That could be done with half of the money we spend now, and potentially even less. The reality is we could slash military spending by half, increase NASA's budget five times over, and still save a trillion dollars in five years. And that's just an extreme example. NASA doesn't need $100 billion a year to thrive beyond our wildest dreams. Three-fifths of that budget would put NASA right back at Apollo-era funding levels. For the pragmatic amongst you, yes, there is a practical element to NASA beyond hope, wonder, and awe. NASA and NASA-derived technology helped pioneer the study and creation of artificial limbs and complex life-saving apparatuses like the ventricular assist device. NASA's CMOS technology is the reason you can have a tiny camera in your smartphone. If you've fed your children baby formula, you have NASA to thank for its creation. And if you've ever benefited from something being preserved via freeze-drying, you can thank NASA there too. NASA led the charge on the creation of solar power technology and water purification systems, all the while it created new forms of warming insulation still used in homes and offices and life-saving anti-fire technologies used by firemen to this day. Early NASA missions necessitated the creation of cordless power tools and other pieces of traditionally plugged-in gear, while your comfy bed's memory foam was also created by NASA. The American Department of Defense invented the GPS system of satellites we use to this day, but it was NASA-developed software that made those satellites work properly, with incredible accuracy. NASA has grown food in zero gravity, studied space's effects on DNA and the growth of cancer, and has performed hundreds of smaller experiments on the International Space Station alone. It's even conducting careful studies of an astronaut and his Earth-bound, genetically identical twin brother in order to figure out how long exposure to space affects a person down to the minutest details. All of that's awesome, awesome additive qualities that punctuate NASA's usefulness. But all of that doesn't represent why NASA really matters. Not to me, anyway. NASA matters because it goes on cosmic adventures on behalf of all of us, scatters satellites into orbit, and camera and sensor-equipped probes hurtling away from Earth in all directions to send us amazing pictures and intriguing data. In the 1960s, a group of people got together and, in a decade, put people on the moon. Think about that for a second. We mounted a canister full of people on some rockets, shot it into space, and went to the moon. We literally walked on the goddamn moon because of NASA. There has been no greater adventure in the history of mankind. Flying through space to another heavenly body and looking back at where we came from, guys, look at this picture. This is the shot known as Earthrise, of the Earth rising on the moon. That's why NASA matters. Think about the technology that was necessary to get us to the moon in the 1960s. This was before computers as we know them. This was even before the microprocessor that allowed our computers to be crafted was invented. The iPhone you're watching this on has millions of times more processing power than the technology that ran Apollo. With brilliance and swagger and agility, NASA overcame every obstacle in its way to put a person on the moon, just as JFK asked, with momentum that should have brought us to Mars and perhaps even beyond. Imagine what we could have accomplished if we kept the pedal pressed down. But the American population stopped caring. Planned Apollo missions were canned, and the relatively expensive endeavor of putting people into space became almost pedestrian. A sad reflection on society, not NASA. The good news is that NASA was still endeavoring to do great work, and continues to this day, even without the popular support that Apollo received. Mariner and Pioneer and Voyager, right on through the Space Shuttle and the era of the International Space Station. NASA has conducted nearly 200 missions in fewer than 60 years. And don't get it twisted either. Apollo's 17 flights are counted as a single mission. Pioneer's 20 probes count as a single mission. 
The 10 year journey of Pluto exploring new horizons is of course counted as a single mission too. Just as a recent example of NASA knocking everyone's socks off. But NASA is capable of doing even more. All they need is the funding, the attention, and the love. I absolutely adore the fact that private companies are getting into space travel. SpaceX specifically is a marvelous American company, led by the amazing Elon Musk, that is attempting to do what NASA cannot or will not do. And that's totally awesome. More power to the private industry, who will help push the boundaries of what's possible. But understand that space travel is so prohibitively expensive that, ultimately, private companies will only attempt to go into space for one reason, profit motive. That's awesome. That's worthwhile. I applaud that. And I hope that companies like SpaceX continue to work both alone and with NASA in continuing to pioneer 21st century space travel. I hope they make billions. But NASA can work unrestrained from, uninterested in, and unconcerned by a need for profit. There was no profitable reason to build a probe, launch it in 2005, and wait a decade for it to get to a body beyond the orbit of Neptune, smaller than our own moon, with no motive other than the fact that it's interesting and we're curious. Apollo might have been designed to flex our muscles to the Soviets and to conduct some science, but there was no other reason to go. We went because, well, there it is in the sky, the moon. We went because we could go. NASA should be actively working on getting us to Mars at an accelerated pace. Not because there's money to be made mining it, but because Mars is there. We've stared at it for thousands of years, and now we can get to it. NASA doesn't need to look into deep space to uncover the mysteries of the universe in order to sell data and imagery, but because we have an innate need to know where we came from and how we got to this place. There's no need to explore the moons of Saturn and Jupiter other than sheer curiosity. Listening with radio telescopes for its signs of alien technology isn't done to create trade packs with new partners, but because we want to know if we're alone. NASA is already doing so much great work in these regards, and many others. Now imagine what they could do if we gave them more money, taken from the military budget, and aimed it at the betterment and education of our country and of the world. I envision a NASA that's so ambitious, so well-funded, and so chock-full of well-paid scientists, engineers, and other brilliant minds, that it's figuring out how to more effectively and more rapidly travel through space. A NASA that plots grand, unthinkable projects, like a generation ship pointed towards a nearby star system. A NASA that makes space travel routine, travel to nearby bodies common, the idea of living somewhere else feasible. A NASA that pushes and pushes and pushes. A NASA that isn't afraid of failure, that isn't afraid of experimentation, that isn't afraid, as Buzz Aldrin recommends, to send men to Mars without any feasible way to bring them back. This NASA should grow and learn alongside a burgeoning private space industry as eager for economic answers in space as we should be for everything else that the stars hold for us. Maybe I'm an idealist. Maybe I'm even a little inconsistent with my look on government size and spending, letting my love of exploration and adventure get the best of me, letting my lifelong obsession with space overcome my better instincts. But I don't care. There's so much we don't yet understand here on Earth, especially in the oceans, and I totally get that. But the big secrets, the riddles and mysteries unthinkable in nature are out there, not here on Earth. We can continue to talk about what's possible, dream about it, even plan for it, or we can fund getting there right now. With proper funding and attention, we could send people to Mars in a decade's time. I'm game, are you? Well, that's enough passion for one day, enough hope for a new society that appreciates space and all that it can offer. A society that can appreciate that some things can and should be done as a nation. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to check out the bibliography and reading list in the description. Until we meet again for another episode of Colin's Last Stand, please keep the feedback coming, be good to each other in the comments, and above all else, keep on learning. <laughs>